Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures, and today I'm going to be looking at two ways to do rust. What I've got are two of the Secret Weapon Best Weathering Trophies. I've got one that I'm going to do in Old Rust, which I've sprayed with the Krylon Brown enamel, and one that I'm going to do in a New Rust, a brighter rust, that I have sprayed with a Rust-Oleum Red. You can see right off, they're very different colors. I also have the paints that I'm going to be working with, which for me are the Dalarani inks. I have my water bottle my isopropyl rubbing alcohol, I have the pigments I'm going to use, and my pigment fixer brushes, etc. And of course I have my uh, Grex Tritium, I'm uh, sorry, in this case Grexogenesis, I'm not using the uh, pistol grip today. So what we're going to do is go ahead and switch cameras and I'm going to get started and show you how I make rust two different ways. Um, I mention two ways because of course there's not one way to do it, there's not two ways to do it, there are a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, Google Images is a great resource. Of course, you can get on there and look up old rust, new rust, tractor rust, tank rust. It doesn't matter. You know, find all the rust uh, references that you're going to need. Um, there are lots and lots of them out there. Uh, of course, you can go through um, MrJustin.com, my page. There are lots of reference photos there. Uh, Matthew Fontaine has a lot of great reference photos. Uh, in fact, last time he came to California, we spent uh, hours at the uh, Sacramento Railroad Museum uh, taking pictures mostly of uh, cordial old tractors and trains. So we've got lots of good photos for you. But always go look at your reference photos. It's a great way to uh, find what you're looking for. Without much else, let's get started. Okay, I've got my two weathering trophies here. I've got my paints all pre-thinned and ready to go. I'm going to start by loading up the airbrush and uh, doing a bit of work on the old rust one. I'll take turns back and forth between them. Uh, I'm going to do the rust first in paint uh, because it's, uh, pigments are better used as an accent most of the time, although you can create rust entirely from pigment, uh, the effect is generally going to be better if you have something to work with to begin with. Um, put down the paint first and use the pigment as an accent. So I'm adding a little bit of purple lake directly into the airbrush. See it's a bright purple color, not going to matter. This is a transparent tone. I'm just going to put down a random pattern of purple on here. Again, this is my old rust, so it's going to be a lot darker. I'm just going to do a random modeling effect. Doesn't matter if I get some legs like that. I'm just spraying real rough, real quick. Just trying to create a pattern. Because I'm using translucent tones, some of that purple will still show through, which is the idea. Just doing some little dots now. Railroad trellis bridges are a great source of inspiration for old rust. You'll see that nice dark purple brown form. Clean out the airbrush between colors here. My grungy old cleaning cup. I'm not going to talk about, uh, a lot about the airbrushing portion of this, but of course I'm you know, rinsing it clean with water between colors and then I'll run a little alcohol through. Always run it clean with the water first, because if you do the alcohol straight away you'll just create a gum out of the uh, paint that's in there. For the alcohol, I'll strip anything that might have been left behind, and then always do a bit of water after that to get any residual alcohol so that when you put your next color in, you're not putting it right into some alcohol and messing things up. For the red one, uh, for the newer rust, I'm going to add a bit of burnt umber. In this case, to darken it up a bit, and same thing I'm doing here is a little bit of random patterning. Some dots, some streaks. Just want to discolor the red a bit.
that's good enough. Let's see, between the two, the tone has definitely changed. Let the red one dry. Go back to my old rust. Water first. Alcohol, then some water, all right back to the old rust, uh, what I've got here is red earth, I'm going to add a little bit of the reddish tint to my old rust. You notice I don't have the uh, hopper on the airbrush, of course paint quantities I'm working with I don't need it, it makes it easier to clean between colors. And of course, does not obscure the paint job while I'm working. Red Earth is the is an opaque color. So I'm going to be a little more gentle with this than I was with the purple, because I want to leave that purple showing through. I'm giving it a full surface coat, but very light and still with you know heavier spots and lighter spots. I don't want to overdo it, overpower the uh, red that's in there, or I'm sorry, the uh, purple and browns that are in there. I will take some down here in the recesses where it would be a little brighter, and on the top where it would be a little brighter. Rust is accumulating. So I've got a couple of choices to make while I'm working with these. Uh, one. I can go, you know, pure realism here and uh, do the rush like you'd see it in your reference photos. Um, or two, uh, and what I'm going to do is because the, you know, focal point here, of course, is the, you know, secret weapon and the best weathering, the, the text that's actually on the trophy. Uh, I'm going to draw attention towards that. So in the case of the uh, dark trophy, I'm going to lighten it up around the secret weapon and the best weathering. And in the case of the lighter trophy, I'm going to darken it up uh, again, just to create some forced focus and uh, draw the eye where I want it to be. And that's still true on vehicles and such as well. Uh, certainly when I'm doing uh, historical competitive pieces, I tend to uh, you know, go more for the you know, hyper-realism and make sure that uh, anybody looking at it is going to say, oh, that, that rust is where it should be. Uh, whereas when I'm doing um, you know, fantasy and gaming pieces, it's a little easier to say, well, I want to draw attention to the, you know, the gun or the cupola or the commander or whatever, because that's more important. So I'm going a little heavier. You can see around Secret Weapon and Best Weather. Just running air through at the moment to help dry that up. You don't always have to go get your uh, blow dryer. You can just use the air from the airbrush. Got some feet, not worried about it. Spraying heavy on purpose, so I want to get some random spattering. I actually want some streaks, I want some legs. All of that's going to work out to my advantage once the actual pigment portion of this starts. Alright, move on to this guy. I'm actually going to use a little bit of the uh, red earth in him too. It's just a darker shade of the red that's already on this guy. And not much, doesn't take much. Rinse it out with water. Rinse it out with alcohol. I'm going to clean the tip here so I don't get uh, a lot of tip buildup. And I do that just by putting some alcohol into the chamber and then very gently with a brush wiping off the tip of the needle. And back again to water. So there's not alcohol sitting in there. All right, my next color uh, for both pieces is flame orange. This is a bright, bright orange. Run just a little air through here first. 
still some wet spots. Still see some shine. Get that one out of the way. So again, this is another transparent color. So I'm just going to come in and you know, very gently give it some patterning. More towards the bottom here. Once I've got a, you know, a little bit of a pattern laid down, I'll come in and do the force focus where I want it to be. A little bit more on the top. It's going to be a little lighter. All right, and then I'm going to come in again, just around the letters here, lighten that up intentionally. See, I'm keeping the airbrush moving, giving a bit of a pattern as I work. And I'm still not worried about spider legs or runs or puddles or any of that. It's all going to work to my advantage for this particular piece. So, in fact, I'll come over here and I'll create a, a bit of spider legging on purpose so we can see how it's going to work later. Nice heavy blob. There we go. I want to get it all running down. Coming in from the top. You can see I've got a nice splat of spider legs on there. It's fine. Don't do that every time, but it'll work for this. So same deal, coming in with my orange. Random patterning. In this case, I'll do a little over the lettering, but then I'm going to stick mostly to the outside, because again, I want the uh, focus on this place to be dark. So you can see I'm kind of framing in the lettering. And time to change colors. So that runs clear. Alcohol. Clean the tip. Now what? Last but certainly not least, at least on the uh, uh, paint side of this, I have some Indian yellow. Mix that up nice and well, and again, both pieces are going to get a little bit of this. The Indian yellow is another transparent color, so it's not going to take much. I'm going to come in here just around the lettering, lighten it up a bit. Batter from the top here, some of that effect. Got some more legs. Always from the top because I want it to run with the direction of the piece. Just air now. Make sure those little legs and runnels go down. Alright, so that needs to dry, obviously, but you can start to see some rust color and some rust pattern on that one. Do the same here. And on this one, it looks like the uh, transparent yellow is going to be too light, too subtle, so I am going to very quickly rinse this out and grab one of my opaque yellows. Do something I generally don't recommend, which is put it directly into the brush.
wouldn't you know it, I don't have any of my opaque yellow dollar round inks handy. So, not a problem. We have a cure for that. A little bit of Cygnus Yellow from P3. Very, very bright for what I'm going to be doing. And again, I don't recommend doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and mix that right in the hopper. Right in the chamber, rather. Added a little bit of water. I'm not going to add my usual uh, isopropyl because without the cup, it's tricky to see whether or not you've thinned it enough beforehand. All right. So now I'm shooting the Cygnus yellow through here. I'm going to come back and add just a little bit of this to the dark one. Not too much, I can just dab that off. There we go. And put the airbrush down. We'll look at these side by side here. So you can still see we've got a nice fresh weathering look here, a nice older weathering look here. And everything will look a lot better when I get the uh, finished photographs up. I'm going to go ahead and clean the airbrush, come back, and we're going to work with pigments. Okay, I am back and ready to do the pigments. Uh, I have my usual rust assortment out, which for me is violet, rust red, rust orange, rust brown, burning sands. These four, of course, make up our core rust kit. And then dark yellow. I also have a bottle of the Secret Weapon Pigment Fixer, a brush I'll use for applying the pigments, and a brush I'll use for applying the fixer. Now it does take time for this to dry between layers, uh, between applications, so and once again I can switch back and forth between the two here, which is nice. Alright, I am going to start on my old rust, and I'm going to do this in lots and lots of little layers, and I am just going to start by stippling in some pigment where I want it, I'm trying to get that old rust feel here, get a little bit of the texture, a little bit of the color. And again, I'm trying to keep it a little lighter towards the center because I want to keep the focus on that lettering. And you'll see I'm not going everywhere, but I am trying to keep it somewhat random. Not entirely, of course. You do want to have some control and some selection, and I'll add some in here right on the inside of my lettering. Clean that off a bit. Come with some rust red do my fixer here in just a second so that I can build up layers but I want to be able to blend these two colors together a bit create some visual interest in the corners drawing a bit of the red around the lettering around the lettering, bring back some of that brightness that I was looking for. 
I'm not worried about getting it into the lettering at this point because I'm actually going to come back with some uh, enamel, make a little enamel wash and put it into those recesses. Going to get my violet back in here, darken these up area, areas up again. All right, I've got my texture, I've got a little color variation, and I'm going to do this in lots of layers. So if it doesn't look like much now, it's not supposed to. And for this first one, I'm going to let capillary action do all of this work for me, at least almost all of it. I might brush it around a little bit. If you brush it, you're going to blend things together, and it gives you a nice soft focus look. But it's not always my goal. So if you want to keep the texture of the pigment where it is, then let capillary action do all of the work for you. And that's what I'm doing this time, is just letting it flow onto the model. couple of spots I'm going to stipple in the pigment where I want it a little softer a little more blended you can see I'm actually brushing some pigment around here just a little bit because I can see like this line of purple right here if it shows up in the video is a little heavy for me so I'm going to thin that out brush it around stipple it in blend it with the other colors around it pull all these out and blend them together a little bit not a lot it's tricky to do this when everything's this wet, too, because you can't really see what the finished color is going to be until it's completely dry. So, set that one inside, let it dry, start in on this bad boy. This guy is mostly new rust, so I'm actually going to go right into the rust orange. Create some of that color and texture variation. heavier on this guy. I definitely want him to be heavier on the rust. This is the rust brown. A little bit out of the recesses there. I don't need quite so much in there. Come back a little bit of rust red, not a lot. bit of burning sand for this first coat, just a bit. If you get too much on here, don't worry about it. You can always take it off. I can come in right now and blend it through, pull it all off. I mean, at this stage, we haven't put down any of the fixer yet. Nothing is settled. I was going to wait on the dark orange, but I'm not. The way it's looking right now, I want to actually add a or dark uh, yellow, not dark orange. I want to add some of that here and blend that in right now. And in this case, I'm going a little heavier because I am going to blend this one. I want a, a softer, smoother rust, which you'd see on new rust like this. So I'm going to apply it pretty heavy, apply the fixer very heavy, and then actually brush it around a little bit very gently. You can see I'm blending it together very, very gently. Take some of the excess off my towel there. Just to blend the colors. Get the pigment that was hiding down there out of here. And now, while this is still wet, I'm going to come in with a little bit of the dark yellow, and sprinkle it on here, gentle texture. It's almost invisible, and that's as it should be. It's going to be a lot heavier when it dries, so I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to set this one aside, come back and check on the first piece. We're still wet, still really wet, uh, but that's all right. You can see how it's coming. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit it off camera here with the blow dryer 
Obviously, I don't want to come anywhere near the open pigment pots. So, we'll be right back. Obviously, you need to be careful using a blow dryer because if your pigments are still sitting in a lot of fluid, uh, you can blow them around and get them where you don't want them to be. But already you can see, particularly thanks to the violet uh, pigment, I've really got that old rust look going now. Uh, just to compare the two sides, here's the part we've applied pigment to. Starting to look rusty and crunky. And this is just paint. So we could stop here. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong uh, with rust doing it like this, uh, that's fine. Um, it does lack some texture, it does lack some uh, color, uh, and one of the things that we can do with pigment that you can't do with paint is create not just a three-dimensional texture, but a three-dimensional color, because you are actually laying color on top of itself um, uh, with the texture. You know, it's one thing to do uh, translucent layers of paint like this, uh, but this actually creates stacked texture as well as that color, and you can't get that from paint. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna actually just work on this one side here. I'm only gonna finish one side on each of these guys come in with, actually it's not true, I'm not going to do dark yellow. I'm going to come back in here with some rust orange. Lighten up my letters a bit. I've got to be careful, it's still very wet in the recesses there. I'm just going to pull that out. And again, in this case, I've got a dark border. I'm going to go lighter here around the lettering. So now I'll come in with my dark yellow. This brush is probably a little too big for what I'm trying to accomplish, but we'll see it through. In fact, yeah, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. little stippling motions. And again with the pigment fixer. Letting capillary action take care of it, but I am actually dabbing against the model as well. Now I'm going to uh, intentionally not cover the whole surface of the area that I'm rusting because what that's going to do is actually give me a mottled look on the finish. Uh, there will be some uh, uh, visible edges between layers. And for this piece I want that. I find that uh, with rust it can, if done properly and carefully, uh, give you a nice aged look that way, uh, where you'd have you know layers of rust building up over time, and you'd see where one stopped and a new one started. So I'm doing that intentionally. You can see the dry spots through here, and uh, the difference between layers will be visible when all of that dries. So let's come back to our new rust, and of course, still wet. That's all right. It takes about 15 minutes for the pigment fixer to dry completely in most uh, applications, so I'm just going to hit it with the blow dryer real quick. And I'm back. Good enough. But right off the back, I mean, you can see how much brighter uh, this is by comparison to the other one. Obviously, you'll get a better look at it when it's finished. Um, I'm actually going to bring this down just a little bit with some rust red. Gotta go back to the larger brush because I need a big surface for this. Rust red, and I'm going to the inside. I want my letters to be darker. Red action. I will bring in a little bit of violet. Actually, switch back to the small brush for the violet. I 
don't want a lot of old rust here, but I really do want to draw some focus to the letters. And while I'm going to put a wash in them when this is all said and done, it's still better to tap some of that off. It's a little too heavy for me. And again, we're building it up in layers here, layers, 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 layers. to the pigment fixer. Last time I brushed this around, this time it's going to be all capillary action. And same thing, I'm going to not cover the entire surface, but do this intentionally so that it creates a little bit of bordering, a little bit of mapping, some visible edges. And I suspect that by now you see why we don't give away a lot of these trophies every year whether each one of these by hand when we give them away. And you can see what that mapping is going to look like. It'll be nice. Give me some edges. And back to the other one, which of course is still wet. So back to the blow dryer. We're still a little wet here, uh, both on the surface and in the recesses, but you can see what I mean about the uh, edge mapping. You can very much see some visible lines, and that is entirely intentional because I'm now going to come over with another coat and darken this up a bit along the outside, lighten it up a little bit more on the inside, and I'll have the visibility that I'm after. So I'm going to come over that edge, just along that edge with the violet pigment blend that out a bit, but I want to create the effect of uh, layering and edging, the, the mapping, again, done in a controlled way, uh, gives you the look that you'd actually get from, you know, real rust, where it builds up layer, layer, layer over time. The older the rust, the more layers it's going to have. And again, uh, old railroad trellis bridges are a great source of inspiration for that. Uh, Sacramento happens to have a lot of them. Sacramento, California, of course. And uh, you know, so I can get out there and, and get pictures of these and see them. But uh, Google Images is still your friend. Lots of good stuff for you there. Let's get a little bit of that rust red. Just a little bit. At this point, I've covered up more of the paint than I originally intended to, but I'm trying to give you guys a good look at how I alternate layers with pigments. You know, the, the difference between uh, quick pigment work for me and you know, master class competitive level pigment work is that you know, I might do uh, you know, three colors in one or two layers for you know, one of my uh, rhinos or warjacks or something, but for a competitive piece, like a, you know, if I was actually trying to do this I-beam for a competitive piece, uh, chances are good we'd be looking at you know six or seven colors like the six we have here we might add terracotta and then you know six or seven layers as well just to uh, very slowly build it up I'm doing these layers a lot heavier and a lot thicker uh, than I generally do in part to keep it visible for you guys and in part because unfortunately I can't spend you know 10 or 20 hours on each one of these trophies as much as would actually like to I do enjoy making nice rust so there's my rust again I'm gonna hit it with the pigment fixer and this time I'll do the whole surface Capillary action from the side of the brush in this case.
couple heavy spots of pigment. I'm going to pick those out. And then I'm going to get in here with the brush and just suck some of that pigment fixer out from that recess, only so it doesn't take as long to dry. Since I'm going to fill that in with enamel, it doesn't really matter. There we go. And last but not least, I'll take one more shot at the uh, light rust. And then we're going to call it good, and I'll finish the other side without you and show you the finished pictures. All right, same deal. We've got our rust mapping. You can see the edges. You can see the dark spots in the center, light spots around the outside. Uh, honestly, though, I'm not a huge fan of this one. I don't like the way it's turning out. Uh, so I'm going to blend a lot of this out and a lot of this away. Uh, I'm going to work quick and heavy, only because the video is already running long. And as much fun as it must be to watch paint dry, I figure it's about time to wrap it up here for you. Sands. All right. There's a little more color, a little more texture. It certainly looks like a very heavy fresh rust. So this time, same deal, I'm going to do the pigment fixer over the whole surface. Doing my best to leave the texture intact at this point. If you're really concerned about controlling texture, you can use a uh, Texture paste, uh, a little bit of acrylic medium and sand, or get one of the Liquitex, uh, you know, fine pumice texture paste and put it on there. Even a little bit of the, uh, you know, white putty and uh, MEK mix can work wonders. That way you're starting with the texture instead of trying to recreate it. All right, so at this point, I'm going to say that uh, both of these are finished for now. Obviously, they're wet. I am going to let them dry, come back, and we'll talk about the end of this. Okay, here I am with the two finished pieces. You can see, although both rust, they are very, very different. Uh, one of them with lighter, more red tones. The other darker tones with lots of water mapping on it. It's not everyone's thing, but I happen to really enjoy the water mapping on old rust that you get. I did finish the back sides of them with a much quicker finish. And again, a little bit of the mapping on the old rust, not so much on the new rust. So I'm going to let these dry for 24 hours so that the pigment and pigment fixer is completely dry before I get in there and touch them up, attach them to their sockets. and get them ready to hand out for our contests. Any questions, of course, you know where to find me. It's Mr. Justin at secretweaponminiatures.com or just Justin at secretweaponminiatures.com. And of course, you'll find us on the uh, Facebook page. So facebook.com slash secretweaponminiatures. Always happy to answer questions. Always happy to see the work that you're doing. Anytime, this is my favorite part of the job. So feel free to uh, harass me uh, either via email or on Facebook.
Thanks again for watching. Talk to you soon.